Hi guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Today's episode is a highly awaited one because it's time to talk about Femina Miss India. Finally, the registrations have been opened officially and I'm here to talk all about it. The Femina Miss India organization officially announced that registrations for Miss India this year are now open just a few days ago on their social media pages. If you are a Miss India aspirant, make sure that you turn on the notifications for the Miss India page because you wouldn't want to miss out on any important announcements going forward. In this video today, I'm going to talk all about the registration process, how you can apply and submit to be eligible for the competition, the eligibility criteria as well, because there seems to be a lot of questions regarding those and I'm also going to be sharing a few tips here and there so if you're an aspirant keep watching and stay tuned till the end of the video. Let's talk about the eligibility criteria for Femina Miss India 2024. Continuing the same pattern as the last few years, the height criteria for this year's Miss India competition is also 5'3", which is equivalent to 160 centimeters. So make sure that you get your height checked at an official clinic or by a family physician as well. This has to be your height without heels. So make sure you stand tall, have great posture so that you can get your height measured exactly the way it is. The next criteria for the Miss India competition is the age criteria. Now, while the age bracket for Miss India is 18 to 25, something I noticed in this year's form is that you have to be 25 years of age as of December 30th, 2023 and not 2024. So make sure that if you are turning 26 this year, that is in 2024, you would still be eligible for the competition. In addition to being over 5'3 in height, and between the age bracket, as I mentioned, you also have to be a single female. You have to have never been married or engaged in the past as well. This is something that I personally would have hoped for the criteria to change, but it looks like this year also the criteria means that you should have never been engaged or married. And just like any other competition that gives you a chance to represent your country, India, the Miss India organization also needs you to be an Indian citizen and passport holder in order to be eligible to represent India. However, if you are an OCI card holder, you are eligible for the second runner-up position. And honestly, being second runner-up at Femina Miss India is not a bad deal at all. Thousands of women would be killing to be in that position. So don't think that that takes away your winner position, but look at the positive side of it and look at the brighter side the fact that you still get to have a title which can never be taken away from you and what you do with the exposure and visibility as a second runner-up can also change your life completely let's talk about the important documents that you need to have in place if you want to compete for Femina Miss India now the first thing that you have to have with you in order to prove that you are an Indian citizen is your nationality proof now this is preferred that you show your passport and in case you don't have a passport issued as of now, you can show the application that you have already initiated your passport process. The reason the organization wants this nationality proof is that in case you end up winning the competition, you should at least be eligible to fly outside of India and be able to represent India because without a passport, the contestant can no longer go to Miss World and so that part of the documents is extremely important. If you don't have a passport right now, I would suggest you show the application for your passport process being initiated but at the same time you should also have your Aadhaar card or your driving license something that shows your nationality. Now the next set of documents that you need to have is for your eligibility from a certain state. Something that a lot of people don't understand or know about is that at Femina Miss India, you get to compete from more than one state. It's one of the competitions that follows a state format, which means that you end up representing a state and eventually your country. Now, the best part is that Femina Miss India gives you the opportunity to compete from more than one state, which is you can either compete from your birth state, which is the state from where you were born. In that case, showing your birth certificate would suffice because it would mention the place where you were born. I know for a fact that a lot of people have birth certificates which have the locations where they were not actually born but somehow the birth certificate has another state mentioned on it. It's completely fine. You can actually be eligible from that state if your birth certificate has the name of the state on it. And in case you have your passport, your passport would obviously mention your birth state as well. The other states that you can be eligible from are your current state. Let's assume you work 
or are currently studying in a state, then that becomes your current state. And so to show the eligibility from a current state, you can either show your offer letter of your job or you can show your student ID that you are studying in that. Maybe you're a college dropout and you're just living in the state. You don't study and you don't have a job right now. That's also fine because you can show your rental agreement. The fact that you reside in that state also counts. And so you are eligible from your current state that way. If you don't have a rental agreement, you can also just simply show the gas bill or the electricity bill of that address and you would still be able to compete from that stage. So make sure that you are trying to put together all of these documents to be able to maximize your chances at the competition. The third option that you get to compete from a state is your native state. Your native state is one that your parents belong to. So maybe one of your parents was born in a different state or maybe your parents have a house in a different state but they don't actually live there but they would still have property documents that would have proof of having a residence in that state. And so that would become their native state. Maybe one of your parents' passports says their birth state. You can also use that as a document for proof. The website clearly mentions the documents that would be accepted as eligibility documents from all states. Some people end up being eligible from three or four or five states because of all of these options. However, the competition only allows you to compete from three states at maximum. Now what I would suggest aspirants to do strategically is make sure that you understand which state is the most competitive, the number of participants that were there in a certain state in the last couple of years. Do your study on that and if not, if you don't have that information, if you don't know how to prioritize which should be your state preference number one, two and three, in that case you can always book a clarity call with me, the link for which is given in the description box below and I can walk you through what would be the most strategic application process for you. I can also review the pictures that you can submit for your application if you need me to do so. Once you've made sure that you're eligible and you have all your documents in place, the next step is actually getting your pictures ready. Now the form will ask you for four different pictures, a no makeup picture, a close up shot, a full shot and a mid shot. At Conquer with Nikita Tanwani, one of the offerings that we offer as a part of our offline training programs is a portfolio shoot. but in case you have not been able to train with us but you're still looking for those portfolio pictures and really well shot photographs by a professional team, especially a team that has an expertise of working with pageant contestants, Conquer is now offering individual portfolio shoots as well. So you can fly down to Hyderabad and get to do a photo shoot with the Conquer team on any date and time of your own choice provided the team is available. And I'm going to leave the link for that individual shoot offering in the description box as well. And me and my team can offer you the best pictures you have ever gotten shot. I can guarantee you that and make sure that you have a really strong application for your pageant coming up. Why I suggest getting these pictures professionally shot even though the form does not necessarily state so is because of the amount of competitiveness that there is in this competition. A lot of the girls that are applying from across the country are women who come with a lot of experience in front of the camera and eventually even during the course of the competition you will have to be in front of the camera a lot and so it just makes sense to be able to start getting used to being on camera, knowing your posing skills and being comfortable in speaking in front of the camera and knowing your angles really well. And so booking a portfolio shoot before the competition would not just get you really good pictures for the pageant application form, but would also make you feel a lot more comfortable. I know that there is this bias and misconception that Miss India and competitions of that sort are only looking to recruit models. I would say that's not entirely true. However, what they are looking for is if you are commercially viable, which means that do you have the potential to become a model? And for that, they need to see if you can have facial expressions on camera. Do you know your poses? Do you know your angles? And they can find those things out just by the pictures that you end up submitting. So make sure that you work with a professional team. Make sure you know what foundation to use on your skin tone, what styling suits you the best, what kind of heels you're wearing, what kind of outfits are flattering for your body type, what lipstick shades are suitable for your skin tone because I've seen the wrong lipstick shade being used in portfolio pictures that were shot independently by contestants so many times and if you still have doubts like I said book a call with me and I can walk you through what you need to do in order to enhance your profile and maximize your chances at the competition. Once you have all of these things ready with you you are pretty much sorted and you are ready to fill out the form. This is all you need to know this year Femina Miss India is not asking for any any videos to be submitted so I would say on 
the help of the contestants, they've really made the application process a lot easier. Otherwise, I would be sharing video tips for you as well. However, I will say that right now, the most important thing to keep in mind is your portfolio pictures that you are using to submit your application form. Make sure you are not editing those pictures to an extent where they look unreal and they don't look like you. The worst thing that can happen for a contestant is she doesn't look like the picture that she submitted in the form, so you don't want that to happen. At the same time, make sure to not use any filters on top of your pictures. Your face should be clearly visible. Do not use sunglasses and do not use any colored light while working with a photographer which gives a reddish or greenish tint. Sometimes on your skin tones, that doesn't look nice at all either. If you are getting a photo shoot done in your own hometown independently without a posing coach or a pageant coach like me, then make sure you do your study and research the past portfolio pictures and develop the concept for your photo shoot accordingly. The jewelry that you wear in the looks really matters. If it is not up to the pageant standards set by Femina Miss India, that itself could create just a bad impression, I would say, because these pictures are your first impression in front of the judges before they have even met you. Another thing to keep in mind is that even if you had gotten a professional photo shoot done, if it was done any time before the last six months, it is high time that you update your pictures because you also want to make sure that you're putting across your best foot and that the pictures is also similar to what you look like currently. A lot of you may have lost weight or put on weight or maybe gotten a haircut or changed your hair color or there must have been something that physically changed about you and so if your pictures do not reflect what you look like right now then that means that those pictures are not reflective of your true personality and the last tip I want to share regarding pictures is also understand from a business perspective why is the organization asking for these pictures what you have to understand is that a lot of the times contestants feel that this picture is good enough it shows what I look like what they do not understand is that would the Miss India page post that photo shoot picture on their page if it's not worthy of being posted on their official page, then that's not a good enough photo shoot for your application just because when you get announced as the winner, these are some of the pictures that the organization is going to use to declare you as the finalist or as the winner and those pictures will be posted on their page. And the organization does not want to dilute their brand or bring down the value and the image of their brand by posting a picture of a contestant who does not meet the standards and the expectations set by the organization. Now that we've covered all of the things to be kept in mind, you've gotten your documents as well. When you start filling out the form, one of the things that you will see in the form is that the form asks for your Instagram handle, which brings me to my next point. It's so, so essential to have a public Instagram profile. If you are someone who wants to keep it private, you're just not going to be able to get inside a pageant because you're applying for a job that puts you in the public eye. So make sure that your profile is public. And on top of that, it's not about the number of followers that you have, but the fact that does your profile look like an eligible contestant and someone who's aspiring to become a Miss India. I need to be able to see your personality, what your interests and hobbies are, if you have any previous accomplishments, if you're a pageant girl and you have experience in beauty pageants, I would like to see that on your profile. If you're a model or a freelance model or a professional model, whatever you have done, make sure that you don't hold back. Don't be saving those pictures for your application and not be posting them on social media because I recently heard that some girls do that. They get their portfolio pictures and not post them on social media which to me is the most hilarious thing ever I would not see any reason for why somebody would do that so make sure that all of your journey all of your work whether it's any TV commercial if it's been an art shoot if it's behind the scenes get good at making good content which would also attract the Miss India organization because trust me when you fill that form out you have your Instagram handle there believe me they are going to check out your profiles and that will be one of the ways that you will also be creating a good impression on the organization before you actually walk into the auditions. The rest of the form is fairly simple to understand and fill out and once you have entered all of your details the form takes you to a payment page where you should make a payment of approximately 3000 which gives you uh, access to the ace your pageant course hosted by the grooming school of miss india 
which will also be extremely helpful to you for your pageant preparation. And that's it. You filled out the form for Feminist India 2024. I know there's been a lot of questions regarding the last date of registration. The organization has not made any official statement with respect to that. And I cannot officially say anything about the last date either, but trust me, I care about each and every single one of you. And if I have any information, I will make sure to put that out and share that with my YouTube family. I hope this video was super helpful and informative for you guys. I will leave the registration link for Femina Miss India as well in the description box below, where you can also book a call with me or book an individual portfolio shoot with the amazing Conquer team. And if you have any questions based off this video or regarding the Miss India application process, make sure to drop those questions in the comment section below. I will answer as many of those as possible as usual. And I will come up with another video very soon answering all of your questions. With that being said, I love you guys so, so much and I will see you very soon in the next video. Bye.